I'm Julie Francis, archaeologist with the Wyoming Department of Transportation. Today we are standing in the valley of the North Fork of the Shoshone River, which uh, drains the east side of the Yellowstone Plateau. And this is a completely volcanic landscape. The volcanic origins of the Yellowstone Plateau have influenced Native American cultures for thousands of years. And one of the most important ways that it has done that is through obsidian. Obsidian is a natural glass formed by rapidly cooling lava, an important source for, of stone for making stone tools. Uh, much of the obsidian from Yellowstone is black, a beautiful black jet glass obtained from an area in the park called Obsidian Cliff. And it was an extremely important source of stone, and in fact it was traded all the way out to the Midwest and the Ohio River Valley during what's referred to as Hopewell times uh, about a thousand years or so ago. In addition to the obsidian found within the park and many other volcanic areas in the American West, there are a variety of cherts and quartzites which occur in these volcanic rocks behind me. And these were all what we would call local sources. And the stone tools and the waste flakes that we find in archaeological sites uh, contain high numbers of local raw materials in addition to obsidian, which indicates a very long-term familiarity with the area and a knowledge of the geology and the geography. Because of the very rugged glacial topography in this part of the world, because of the extremely severe winters, uh, archaeologists have generally presumed that these high elevation areas would have only been used during the summer months, much as we use them today. Mountain sheep were one of the principal resources used in this area. High elevations, we find evidence of mountain sheep traps where sheep were driven into catch pens uh, with long fence lines consisting of deadfall timber. People appear to have been moving into these high montane areas almost immediately after they were deglaciated and became available for human occupation. One of the other things that has come out of these recent investigations is evidence for year-round occupation of the high elevation areas uh, through rock shelters such as Mummy Cave, uh, a site in Sunlight Basin referred to as Dead Indian Creek that had a 4,000-year-old uh, residential structure. Uh, that site, the people there were uh, procuring deer in large numbers, uh, probably communal deer hunting, that also had evidence of ceremonial activity associated with it. In other portions of the high elevations of what is generally referred to as the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem, we have village sites at over 10,000 feet where people were gathering white bark pine nuts and processing them and probably bringing them down to a slightly lower elevation. We are beginning to realize how complex and long-term the use of the high country was by native peoples.